So I've been streaming a lot more lately, mostly on Twitch, and this video is going to be kind of like a sanity check. I've learned a lot over the past month or so of streaming, and I want to share some of my settings, and maybe it'll help some of you that are kind of starting to get your feet wet in streaming. I know that I made a lot of mistakes when I first started, and maybe folks out there that are more familiar with streaming, I've been doing it for a long time, you can check my settings and let me know if I'm crazy about some of this stuff. Streaming for me is very much a mixed bag, and I'm pretty sure it's because of my hardware. I have a really terrible A10-7850 processor. Now this is the old style APU before AMD pulled their head out of their ass and went with the Ryzen series. These processors are absolutely terrible at single core performance. Dual core Pentiums can beat the top end A series processor if that gives you an idea. And in most games, my stupid processor is a huge bottleneck. So streaming or recording compounds this problem. For a long time, I recorded all of my footage and streamed occasionally with my Elgato HD60, which I still have. The problem with the HD60 is I need a laptop with me to actually use it. And I don't want to have a laptop sitting on my desk all the time just for streaming, so I'm trying to use OBS. Initially, my streaming quality was absolutely terrible, and I was streaming on Windows. We hadn't even gotten to Linux yet. So I did a little bit of research and a little bit of tweaking, and I think I got it mostly dialed in. Even still, weird stuff can happen, like I was streaming Hitman on Windows, and check this out. We'll get there. I wanted to test on Linux this morning, but it was just a disaster. Good evening, 47. Our on-site intelligence has confirmed that the target uh, well, the restaurant, and that his security this is interesting. It's like the graphics drivers just crashed or something. I don't think this had anything to do with the streaming, but it was just a weird coincidence. Anyways, let me show you guys my streaming settings. So I'm using OBS because as far as I know, it is the only like real good quality streaming and recording tool. So if you install a recent version of OBS, there's this little wizard that pops up and asks if you want it to dial in your settings. If you have it dial in your streaming settings, it will try to find the best location for you. Now in my case, I streamed to Twitch and it chose for me Seattle, Washington, which is weird because I am much closer to Portland, Oregon. Now I guess it's supposed to use latency, but I don't see how on earth the latency between where I am to Seattle is less than the latency from where I am to Portland. So my advice is pick the one that you know is closest or that you know works best. In my case, it's Portland, Oregon. Now another area you'll want to pay attention to is the output section, specifically the encoder being used. If your CPU is anything like mine, and it's a bottleneck in most games, you want to stay away from the software encoder, specifically X264. I don't know if there are other ones out there, but X264 is going to use your CPU, and that is a huge problem. The OBS setup wizard actually says I should use NVENC, which is great because that's what I use, but the bad thing is it sets the video bitrate to 2000. From what I read, NVENC works best when you use a bitrate of 6000. I've tried to use 2000 before I knew what I was doing, and the quality was really inconsistent. It just wasn't good. So I did a little research and found that people recommend around 6000. So I went with that, and it seemed to smooth things out pretty good. So I've heard people say that the X264 encoder offers better quality, and I'm sure that it does. But my puny little CPU cannot handle that encoder while playing a game. I can't even play Broforce while encoding with 264 if that gives you an idea. It is bad. So the settings here in the video section made probably the biggest impact as far as performance in games. Again, my CPU is a bottleneck, so when I'm streaming or recording, I need to take as much load off of it as possible. By default, or maybe set by the wizard, I'm not sure, the output or scaled resolution is 720. The downscale filter is bicubic sharpened scaling at 16 samples. Now notice in the video I have it set to bilinear fastest, but blurry of scaling. As far as I know, the only advantage you get from downscaling from like 1080 to 720 is it reduces the size of your stream. So if you have a slow connection, you don't have to worry about buffering as much because you're not transferring as much data. My connection is uncapped, so it's like a gigabit or more, I'm not sure. So my network speed is not my problem. Downscaling requires extra CPU cycles, and as we talked about before, my CPU is not good. So, if your bottleneck is CPU, you do not want to downscale if you can avoid it. And like I said, this made a huge difference in games like Hitman. Let me show you. So this is the graphics benchmark for Hitman. 
This is a great benchmark. I use it all the time. I'm sure you've seen it in my videos. The average frame rate here is about 24 frames a second and that's with downscale resolution at 720. Hitman, on Linux anyways, is a relatively CPU intensive game. So when you've got a program like OBS in the background doing some extra CPU stuff, yeah, it's going to bring the frame rates down. Now this is the same benchmark, but with no downscaling. We went from an average of 24 frames a second to an average of 27, almost 28 frames a second. Now we're talking about a game like Hitman and lowish frame rates, below 30 frame rates a second, a 4 to 6 point frame rate difference is actually pretty big. Now if you're already getting like 60, 70, 80 frames a second, then yeah, you can afford to lose maybe 5 frames a second, but when we're talking about low frame rates like this, it's a pretty big deal. Now the last thing I want to talk about is window capture versus screen capture. Now I remember when I first started recording using software recording on Linux, capturing the window offered better performance over capturing the entire screen. Now I've done some tests with different games and that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. It doesn't matter if you're capturing the screen or the window. Maybe it's an OBS thing, I'm not sure. But it is good streaming hygiene just to capture the game that you're streaming because if you capture the entire window, your viewers will see like notifications and other stuff going on. And if you alt tab out or move your mouse away to do something on another like monitor or something, then they may see the window minimized or do something weird. And it's just better to capture the game that you're trying to capture unless you are trying to capture your desktop. I'm using scenes to divide the different things that I'm trying to capture. So when I'm just playing Hitman or Mad Max or something like that, I'll capture the game. But sometimes I want to switch games or I want to show people what my desktop looks like. I'll switch back to the desktop scene and you could do it that way. So like I said, I don't think this has anything to do with performance. It's just good practice when you're streaming to capture only the thing that you want to capture. So I think that about wraps up this video. So if you're used to streaming on Linux and you see some weird settings here on OBS or whatever, let me know in the comments. I'd like to hear from you guys and see if maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I could get better performance or smoother streams or something. And if you're looking to stream, then maybe my settings helped you out, especially if you have a really lame CPU like mine. Dialing in the right settings in OBS can make all of the difference. So I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, consider backing me on Patreon. A little bit of support goes a long way. I appreciate everyone's support and thanks for watching.